And with this video, we commence with Chapter 12, Multinational Accounting, Issues in Financial Reporting and Translation of Foreign Entity Statements. Chapter 11 and Chapter 12 really go together. Um, chapter 11 dealt with um, foreign currency transactions and financial instruments, especially hedge accounting. Chapter 12 now is going to deal with consolidating a foreign subsidiary, including translation and remeasurement. It's also going to deal with hedging and investment in a foreign subsidiary. Learning Objective 12-1 is to understand and explain the recent efforts towards convergence to one set of global accounting standards and the current state of that effort. And um, <clears throat> this probably seems to be total ran totally random, or perhaps here they're talking about, I mean, what it, why are we talking about global accounting standards right now, right? Um, and you might say it's because we're talking about international consolidations, consolidations with foreign currency financial statements, so we might as well talk about IFRS. But um, is an interesting thing about this area of IFRS, of translation and remeasurement, and that is that, and consolidation in general, and that's that it's almost the same for US GAAP and international accounting. So what we're learning in at least th this course up till now is almost identical to um, international GAAP IFRS. So every accountant, first of all, should have some familiarity with international accounting standards with IFRS. IFRS is International Financial Reporting Standards. And aware of those standards, if you're going to consolidate financial statements from where a subsidiary is not from the United States of America, then you should know what basis of GAAP they're using. And if they're not using U.S. GAAP, which may very well be the case, then you need to be the familiar with what the issues are and be able to work with that subsidiary so that you're consolidating them. Obviously, when you prepare consolidated financial statements, the financial statements of the parent and all subsidiaries should be, if the parent's financial statements are U.S. GAAP, then the subsidiaries also obviously need to be U.S. GAAP. Same thing goes for IFRS. If your financial statements are under IFRS, then all of the financial statements should be under IFRS, not just the parent, but the parent and the subsidiaries. You um, also have to consider the different currencies that companies are using, obviously. We're going to talk about that in this chapter. Just a brief word about IFRS, and most of this you've probably seen already. Um, IFRS is written by International Accounting Standards Board, and it's widely accepted around the world and is mandated in over 100 countries. And until very recently, the FASB has been working with the IASB to move towards to converge the two set of standards. And what convergence meant was that US GAAP and IFRS GAAP would eventually be the same. And we, we would all use the same set of accounting standards, whatever country you're in. And it sounds it sounds really nice. You know, we could all hold hands and use the same accounting standards. The, um, it, it hasn't quite worked out. And there are certain key problems that so far there's no solution in sight. One of those problems is LIFO. The United States uses LIFO. And IFRS does not allow LIFO. And it never will. So the U.S. has a real concern here that um, LIFO, if you use it on your taxes, you must also use it in your financial statements. So companies like to use it in their taxes because it reduces their tax bills. So they like LIFO because LIFO lowers their taxes. Forcing companies to use IFRS would take away that option. The IFRS isn't going to allow LIFO. And there, it is possible the IRS could come up with a new rule saying that you could use LIFO for taxes, but use FIFO for your financial statements. But so far, even though Congress wants the U.S. to move towards IFRS, or at least congressmen have said that, um, 
they're not willing to allow companies to use LIFO on their taxes, but FIFO in their financial statements. If they use LIFO in their taxes, they have to use LIFO in their financial statements, and therefore that is a huge hurdle. There's a more important hurdle than that, and that is the area of judgment. U.S. liability laws um, encourage companies to and accountants to work with bright line standards. Accountants like to have bright line standards because in the court of law, they can show clearly how they've complied with those bright line standards. And that makes it much easier for companies to defend themselves in our court system. Europe and countries around the world have different court systems, not quite like the United States, and a different set of common law. And those, the bright line standards here work very well with U.S. law. The judgmental standards, or the more flexible standards of IFRS, um, really are a cause of concern for accountants and financial reporters in the United States. And it's a huge cause of concern. If the U.S. adopted IFRS, they would want brighter lines within IFRS, which themselves would conflict with the basic ideas of IFRS. The SEC got involved in this a few years ago, and they said that foreign companies could issue their financial statements in accordance with IFRS. They used to require what was called a reconciliation to U.S. GAAP. In other words, these, this is my income according to IFRS, this is my income according to U.S. GAAP, and this is why they're different. And the SEC actually eliminated that requirement in 2008. So it's possible that the SEC would allow U.S. companies to choose between IFRS and U.S. GAAP or to require U.S. issuers to use U.S. GAAP. And this way, everybody, the United States, would use the same set of accounting standards as throughout the world. But I find it very interesting that the government is encouraging companies to use IFRS at the same time as it's keeping certain key provisions that discourage the use of IFRS. <clears throat> um, but the goal here is to have a single set of accounting standards all over the world, and that would obviously provide a lot of benefits. Um, you could just know one set of accounting rules, whether you're in the United States or you're in Europe or anywhere in the world, you're in the Far East, the same set of accounting standards would apply. Be much easier for accountants. Accountants would not have to pr switch back and forth in many cases between U.S. GAAP and IFRS. It'd be capital markets conceivably would be able to run more efficiently. And overall, you would have better comparability. I mean, you could compare U.S., let's say a car maker, General Motors and Ford in the U.S. with um, with Toyota or Fiat Chrysler it is, is a European company now. And you could compare those financial statements directly because they're all using the same set of financial statements, and that would be a really nice thing to be able to do. Um, honestly, I've always held the position that this is something that's almost a fantasy, and it's not likely to happen anytime soon. A lot of people have argued me over the years. So far, I'm right, but um, we'll see what happens. <clears throat>